Hello there, everybody. This is Alex from Hardcore and Guides, bringing my guide for Luigi's Mansion, a rank on Hidden Mansion difficulty. Today we're doing Area 2. This one will be a tad bit longer than Area 1 was. This one, I think, contains a total of maybe like eight or nine ghosts, I think, that we have to get. And by the way, I'm getting every single ghost out of the main ghost and area boss ghost, so there's that. And like I said before in the last video, I'm going to try to get all the speed spirits and gold mice. And again, if I forget any, well, I guess I forgot some. So, so far, I think the score is 2-1. So, two speed spirits and one mouse. What I'm doing here is another speedrun trick that I learned from watching a speedrun. And what it is, you're pointing your flashlight at the top of the ceiling and you're moving the C-stick along. Like, while you're walking along the wall to try to keep it, you know, in the center of the ceiling here. And the reason being is... That is basically trying to get enemies to not spawn and scare you. And of course, in speedrunning, if you get scared in this game, it wastes, you know, seconds and frames. But for me, it just pisses me off when I get scared. So I do it because I'm just that kind of guy. So coming into the bathroom, the first bathroom, you're going to get attacked by at least two grappler ghosts. And I can't believe I forget their names. It's like... I forget all the the names of these enemies, and I do apologize for that. Also, one little quick tip. If you want to skip through EGAD's text a little bit faster, just keep matching A and B, like, s alternatively, or simultaneously, either one. I think it's, you know, one, two, one, two kind of trick thing, so. I figured that out in one of my playthroughs, and then I watched the Speedrun guy, and he was like, oh yeah, you can do this. I'm like, oh well, great, just, you know, the first time I thought I could actually figure something out, and that came to happen. Also... Since we're in the actual technical first hallway, there is a gold mouse that can spawn there. It's a 20% chance that he can spawn there. So if you ever hear the little, like, you know, the ding noise or whatever it is that happens whenever you catch or whenever you click on a cheese, then, you know, go straight for him. So there is one that will spawn there. Now, there are times where a gold mouse can spawn in specific, a specific room. And a few of them is the kitchen and the tea room. I know for a fact that they can spawn there. Even though there is a cheese in the tea room, they can still technically spawn. So keep your eye out for that. I think they can only spawn... I don't know if they can spawn on the third floor or the basement hallway. And when I say hallway, I mean like the main, main, main hallway part of it. So first hallway being, of course, the area we just came out of. So... Now we're fighting off some Shy Guy enemies. These guys are really not too tough. I mean, early game, they're kind of annoying because you don't have any elemental abilities just yet until we get it in this area. And the reason why elemental kind of helps is because you can just burn them or freeze them or whatever and not have to worry about going through the mass to do it. So then you got these dancer people here. It's complete, I believe it's complete RNG how long it takes for the male dancer to essentially show his heart. But all you really gotta do is just keep walking away and facing away from them. And when he, he's got a specific audio cue that essentially lets you know when he's ready to be grabbed, pretty much. So just do what you do with, you know, any other ghost. By now, hopefully you guys know what to do, but I should probably explain every video just in case. Uh, what you're basically doing is you're grabbing it, and every 10 health you just keep pulling back. So you keep letting go of the control stick, pull back... 10 health goes down, let go of the control stick, pull back again. There you go. Okay, so I'm going in here to save because there's actually a blue ghost or a speedy spirit. I'll just call them both. That way, in case somebody gets confused, like, what are you talking about? Well, anyway, so in this next room, there's a blue ghost speedy spirit in there, so I will catch him. And this is something I recommend doing. I don't know if it works for sure. Uh, this is just something I'm doing here. This is just a speedrun thing I'm doing. I'm just trying how I'm being stupid. So the first enemy that's going to spawn is a pink puncher. I think that's what they call him. Or purple puncher, whatever it is. I suck him up first because there's going to be a red grappler ghost that's going to spawn. And they are slower than the pink ghosts are. So that kind of helps with getting the blue spirit. And of course, as you saw what I did there, I aimed my flashlight up just a tad bit after I clicked on the, the chair that way I can actually get the grab for him and of course if you don't grab him he's gonna you know fly around the room for a bit and you can use your flashlight to stun him now 
I didn't explain this in the last video, but I believe that the flashlight does kind of have a sort of area of effect rate, meaning that, uh, in, in my, in my words, in my terms, basically what I'm trying to say is the closer you are to a ghost, the longer the stun will last when you flash him. So that's usually why you see me doing things like this, where I actually have my flashlight off, walk up toward a ghost, and flash them. Also, quick little trick, this is not really probably going to help you guys much, but if it does, it does. Quick little trick with garbage cans, which is the green ghosts that throw bananas, you can actually touch them, you can move them into a position that you want them to be in. Yeah, I think they're like the only ghosts that you can do that, that you can actually technically touch. So there's that. Now, we're getting boos to spawn, oh boy. And you need five boos, you need to catch five boos in order for Egad to come up and tell you to go to the washroom. And when you go to the washroom, then you get Toad. Well, you don't have to talk to Toad if you don't want to, but there's a key in there. So this is definitely mandatory that we have to catch at least five boos. And this kind of ruined my whole organization run that I wanted to do, my first run where I was gonna catch like every boo in a specific area after that video was done. And this just, this just screwed it up because you have to catch five mandatory boos in order to continue. And I think you need 40 boos in order to continue to King Boo. So, you need at least 40 boos there. You get, I think, 15 from Boo Losses, so that gives you quite a bit right there. And the rest are really easy to, and really simple to catch. Until you get to the upstairs area when they have like 300 or so health, and that's when they get kind of ridiculous. But, I'm going to show you guys a trick on how to essentially catch boos even better than you were probably doing before. Unless you already know the trick, then you were probably doing it great, and you're probably doing it way better than I could, because I still suck. There are, the guy I watched, again, that did the speedrun, I don't remember his name, but credit to him for everything he taught me, uh, if I can remember his freaking name. Well, anyway, he, uh, basically, he explained it better, but I think he shown it off better, in my opinion, like, visually, I can understand what he was doing. So what he's doing is he's holding down, what I'm doing here, actually, is what he was doing, which is holding down both L and R at the same time. Now, you want to hold down L and R to the point where basically your vacuum part of it, you know, works. You suck up the boo like you do naturally, but every 10 health, yeah, this comes back to play again. Every 10 health, you want to let go of R and instantly click it back on again. So basically what you're doing is you're holding down L and R and then you're releasing R every 10 health, grab it, push it down again. Release it, push it down. Release it, push it down. If you could, if you don't know how to time the 10 health well enough, just do what I do and just pray to God that you're doing it right and just keep mashing it until you get it. Like you see right here. I'm basically just mashing the hell of it. And it works. It works out pretty well. Basically, all it's, all it's doing is essentially just keeping the boo pretty much in a line of sight and making it faster and easier to catch them. I would, well, it's easier when you get the ability down when you understand how to do it so what i'm doing is i'm going to essentially catch every boo that i can in this specific area so we've caught the one in the wife's room the one in the husband's room mother father whatever you want to call them neville and i th again i think her name is olivia but that doesn't sound right i'm not exactly sure and then the one in chauncey's room so that's three out of i think there's a potential six or seven we can catch in total but there's only five technical rooms in Area 1, so... Yeah, we're pretty much just cleaning out Area 1. What I'm doing here is another one of those speedrun things I found, and I couldn't pull it off, so screw me. Essentially, what you're doing, or what I was doing, was a text skip ability, where essentially, if you catch the boo when you're right in front of that tablecloth, and then you instantly suck up the cloth on the table, like, right after you catch him then you can basically skip EGAD's text screen. and I, I'm not good at doing that, so I messed that up and I just left it. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Hell, I didn't even know you could even leave it like halfway or so. I thought you had to literally, you know, capture the whole thing. Also, one thing I want to tell you guys, whenever I get done with an area, I do actually quit. I save the game and I quit. And... Also, you can, you know, copy save files too, which is great, by the way. Thank God for that. So, basically, why that's so important is because I think every time you come back to play the game, 
I think money respawns in specific areas, as in like, you know, vases or shells that will normally naturally spawn random stuff. So that is why most of the time you'll see like me go get a vase in one video, come back, get that same vase and oh, there's coins. And that's pretty much why. All right, so there we go. That takes care of six ghosts. That's, I think, five plus one where? Because we got the three in the main area of area one and then the two in there. I'm trying to remember where I got that 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 first one at then. I probably got him in this area. Because I know, well, there's one in here, of course. So where did I? I, I wasn't really too sure of myself. So the reason why I stopped there was because Skype messages. And it's funny because like I was telling myself today, I was like, I can't wait till like I get to this video, like commentate this video, and like, you know, I'm just gonna forget exactly what I'm doing. And no, I'm doing pretty well. I mean, yeah, I, I literally did this the same day just today. And I've been playing this game like nonstop, so oh yeah, it's crazy. Wait, where did I get the first ghost then? The first boo. Well, either way, yeah, seven now, so we're gonna get our eighth. Eighth one. Usually, most most of the time, he actually spawns in these boxes here, as you can see. So, there's that. Just call me Game Boo. Also, real quick, I don't, this might be a little too far in the video, but if you're new to my channel, well, welcome. I am, again, Alex, and I run this channel. So, I do guides. I do... I mainly do guides, but I have other people on this channel, too, that do things. By other people, I mean one so far, so... Yeah, he's my buddy, David, uh, also known as Take Chrono. You can find him on my main channel. You can find my... Uh, you can find him on the channel page, and you can find my main channel on there, too. So if you want to check that out, check it out. I also do kind of have a mouth, so by that I mean, like, I talk a lot, and I do cuss a lot, too. So I'm going to try not to cuss too much in Luigi's Mansion. I just... There's no reason, really, to. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's weird, because, like, I'm playing a Nintendo game, and I kind of feel like... Kind of like I'm strapped to like not doing that, you know what I mean? That way, just in case somebody watches this video and they're like, "Why are you cussing on a Nintendo video?" Well, I bitch, I can. <laughs> so I I can do it. I know that I can. It just there's something in the back of my head that's like, just don't. Just try to be more polite. So yeah, just keep in mind that I will and I can. But well, I mean I can, but doesn't mean I will. Just keep that in mind. But for all the other people that are, you know, familiar with my channel, this won't... Hopefully this won't degrade any. Like, you won't see me any worse than I am normally. I mean, I'm pretty bad, so... And my commentary is kind of crappy, too. And I do apologize for that. It happens. But when it comes to commentating these videos, it's kind of difficult. Especially when you're trying to commentate and try to entertain people at the same time. Keep them... You know, watching the video, essentially. Like, keep them, you know here to either help them or maybe just interest in watching me play the game or even my commentary. I'm not trying to be like DSP and just go quiet every five seconds because you know what they say in radio, dead air is basically the career killer. And I get a lot of dead air, but you know, it happens. So it's whatever. Okay, so coming into this room, the mirror room, you're, this is a gimmick room and this is a mandatory room we're going to be in because this is where we get the fire ability. And then after we get the fire, we go fight off Shivers in his room. And then I think we get a key to, I forget where, but hey, you gotta do this. So I do apologize that we have to. And essentially, as you guys can tell already, you're basically just using the mirror to your advantage. And you can technically use the dust to your advantage too. And by dust, I mean like when the ghost spawns, you can see like a trail, like a circle, like a circle of dust. And you can use that to your hands to find the ghost, so... This is really just more, like, self-explanatory right here. I mean, if you can't do this part, then... I don't know what to tell you. I really don't, because this is just... Pretty simple, but I guess one trick I can give you is... Whenever it comes to grapple ghosts... There's two tricks I can give you. When it comes to grapple ghosts... Uh, getting doubles is awesome. That's not really one of the tricks. But... <laughs> Basically, if you're catching one and there's one out in the open, like, you know, coming toward you, just start shaking the control stick immediately. And then hopefully you can knock him off just in time, too. So, I mean, shaking the control stick really won't hurt you too much. It shouldn't hinder you too much when it comes to catching 
the ghost you're catching at that point. And for this room specifically, there's corners in here, so trying to lure grapple ghosts into a corner kind of helps out because that way you could just get them into the corner and then, you know, shine on two of them at once or however many there are and get the grab. So, god damn. Okay, that was weird. I had a slight bit of tiredness just come over me for some reason. Man, that kind of stinks. All right, so to get out of this room, all we're going to do is just light these candles. Not too hard. And then we're going to head into Clairvoya's room. And I am not going to do her yet. Like, talk to her yet until a while later until I get everything. Also, I you did see earlier there was a cheese in this room. So that is, I think, mouse 2 out of 10 that I have collected. So I'm going to try to keep track. I think I already lost count of blue ghosts. Which I think I have 3 out of 15. I want to say I have 3 out of 15. I don't know. Maybe... Uh, not too lazy. I was going to say maybe I can just edit the numbers and keep track that way. But I think you guys can keep track on your own. I think you'll be alright. I think you'll do alright. This game's not too hard. Again, you have save states. So if you want to go back and save. And I highly recommend you save after every specific kind of ghost that you catch. If you catch a... If you're going for gold portraits... You know, save your game constantly before a fight. That way, just in case something screws up, you got you got something to fall back on. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing that fire because there's going to be some ghosts that we're going to have to fight that requires you to have the fire ability. So they're basically been covered in ice. In this this little uh, washer right there, there is a washer or dryer, whichever one it was. I couldn't tell. Um, there is a hat. So there's my hat. We got that. That's one out of five of his things that we need. I was looking for any specific, like, cheese. I I wasn't sure if a mouse could spawn in here or not, which I'm not sure if they can, actually. I don't think they can. Well, anyway, we're getting shivers. He's not too tough. Just keep doing the whole, like, pullback trick, and then you got him. It's nothing. Every ghost from here on out until, like, after Bulasis will pretty much just be really, really simple to get. And actually, no, I take that back. Mr. Lugs, I think, will probably be one of the harder ones. Mr. Lugs is the fat guy, the glutton. He's optional, but he's still a pain to get, for sure. Also, in this room, there is going to be a sapphire. And, of course, I'm probably going to screw up these gems and whatever, emeralds, or whatever the fuck you want to call them. I'm going to screw them all up, so if I do, I apologize. More than likely, someone's going to correct me in the comments, but hey... Why wouldn't you, right? <laughs> okay, so that takes care of this room. Now we're gonna... Now we have a chance to go into Melody's room. She does not spawn anything in that room until later, until the blackout. So, we'll wait until then. Come into this room, and you'll instantly be attacked by bats. And you see that I just used the fire just to get them off me. You don't have to. You can just suck them up. But I think that's just complete bull right there. That, to me, is just one of the dumbest things this area has. It's, it's the fact that as soon as you come into this room, you're gonna get bombarded by bats. Also, there are no blue ghosts, and I don't think there's any mice that spawn here. Blue ghost, there is a blue ghost that will spawn, a speedy spirit that will spawn later, but that's only during the blackout. So this is that's one of three of the blue ghosts that do spawn during the blackout. Okay, so all you gotta do, really do in this room is just, you know, open the chest, and if there's a ghost, then just burn him. That's all you gotta do. Granted, you could just burn him completely, you know, every time you use an element... Well, I'm sure you guys probably know this by now, but for those that don't, the elements in this game work in a specific triangle kind of pattern. So if a ghost has some kind of, like, orb-looking thing on the inside of him that looks like it's white and looks like icy, then fire will basically burn that off, and you can't catch the ghost until that element inside of him is gone. So for, like, water ghost, you need ice, and then for fire ghost, you need water. Yada, yada, yada. It's pretty simple, pretty basic stuff. But uh, after you catch, or after you use the element on them, then they have no elemental weakness whatsoever. They are non prejudiced against element. So, like any basic ghost besides booze and, like, you know, regular ghosts, uh, you can essentially kill them off with fire, water, or ice. And every time you burn them, they lose 5 health, and then you could start burn them again, or whatever you're doing to them. 
and they lose five more health until they finally disappear. So that's pretty basic stuff right there. But again, I'm just only, I'm mainly explaining that for the for those that don't necessarily know much about the game, or you know, that never played the game, or just wondering like you know what can you technically do in it. So. Clicking on this mouse hole will basically just, you know, pop that back up and we're right back out and right into the uh, butler room and heading into the laundry room once again to finish off these ghosts. I think there's three or four of them that spawn here. Also, with Hidden Mansion, I think that the game spawns more ghosts, if I'm not mistaken, for specific rooms. Because I know, like, during the blackout, they spawn quite a lot. And I'm not sure if that's technically more than the regular playthrough or not. I'm not really sure. But yeah, you saw there, I just burnt the door. The reason why I did that is just... I don't know. I was like, well... Oh, there's four of them. Okay. I was just trying to be safe, just in case I accidentally press A on the door for whatever reason. I don't know why I would. But for those that don't know or haven't played this game, there are fake doors that are around the map. And Luigi, kind of like, uh, kind of like Leon, or in Resident Evil 2, or even like uh, James Sunderland from Silent Hill 2, will actually look at specific objects if he sees something's off or something's amiss. So Luigi, in this case, if he finds that something's kind of off about something, he'll typically look toward it, giving you the hint that hey, that's a fake door. And also, like in the first area, when you're going into like the rooms up there and that that left hallway, you know, when you're going to go fight the mom, dad, and Chauncey. Uh, there's doors that have rugs that lead in front of them, basically telling you that, hey, that's not a fake door. But of course, if you played the game already, most likely you probably know which doors are which. And of course, you can always look at your map by hitting Y and figuring it out. And no, we're not playing on Xbox. We're playing on a GameCube because that's the only thing this game was made for. And God, I'm glad it was made. Man, was this a good game. This is definitely one of my favorites for sure. I mean, I played the game for fun after I got done recording it. So, you know, there's definitely a speck of fun there that I have with this game. I love this game. I really, really do. It's very intriguing. And plus, it was a launch title, which is crazy. Of all things. Okay, so here's Melody. There, she gives you, I think, like three different questions. Uh... One of them is, okay, this song specifically is for, it's water. So when she asks you, you know, like, what is, what do the composers have in mind? Water or sky or, or what, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's one of them. So there's that. You just say, uh, water for that one. And sometimes you'll say, like, uh, Mario Brothers 3. And I think there might be one more question, but I'm not sure. I think the other one might be, like, Super Mario World or something. But I, I, I do know that sometimes I get Mario Brothers 3 and sometimes I get water. So I think that's probably the only two that you get. Of course, as soon as she, her fight activates, she'll have these music sheets coming to fly above you. You can just burn them or catch them. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you can do either way you wish. That's totally up to you. But I just captured them because whatever. And then after that, she, her heart is uh, available, available for you to catch. And then you get her. So right now, as you can tell, the boos in the very first two areas or so are relatively easy to catch. And thank goodness for that. I'm so glad that they are actually one of the easier ones to catch. Granted, you know, as you go on, they do get harder. And for those that are wondering, why, why is it so important that you want to catch boos? And as I explained before, you know, you need 40 to finish the game. And I think, like, in different versions, it's like 45. Well, either way, you still need a technical amount of booze to get into the last part of the game. Now, catching all the booze on the other hand gives you one of those giant, like, gold-looking diamond things. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. I'm not a specialist in this kind of thing. So you get one of those treasures, big treasure for it. And there's only two that spawn in the game entirely, and the other one's a plant. And we'll get into that when we get into that. And, uh, yeah, if you catch all 50, he spawns that, and then that's going to be a heck of a lot of money. And ca and grabbing, like, emeralds and such, and, like, you know, sapphires and rubies and all that definitely, definitely give you a lot of money in this game. Now, one thing I do recommend, and you saw that I did earlier, was I used the bathroom to save. It's just a quick way of getting a save in. There's a mouse that spawns in here, and there is a blue ghost that spawned earlier that I just caught, so... I got relatively lucky with that. 
That wasn't too bad. And I think maybe it might be this playthrough. I don't exactly remember. I think I skip Mr. Lugs for now and I go deal with everything else first, as in like this room. There is a blue ghost that spawns in here. There's a 20% chance that a mouse can spawn in here too. So keep an eye out for that. If you, all right, real quick. If you miss any mice, the blackout is your best friend for catching them. Now, I want to make mention of this. If you know where a blue ghost is at, and you do this, you know, like you, oh, okay, he spawned, and then you miss it, right? Let's pretend, theoretically, I missed that blue ghost. I found him, but I missed him. Let's pretend. Well, what will essentially happen is, during the blackout, he's gone forever. Like, even if you leave the room, he's gone. He's gone forever. Mice, on the other hand, do not. You can constantly respawn mice as much as you need until the room is lit up. So, always make sure that you have some kind of, like, game plan going on before you completely... Screw yourself over, so there's that. Granted, you again, you can miss... I don't know how many blues and mice you can miss. You can miss a few of them, I'm sure. I recommend getting all the cheese mice, if anything. I mean, that way you can at least have something to kind of lean on. Just in case if you're going for A rank. But again, A rank in this game doesn't really matter too much. So, I'm just doing this for fun. And helping those out that are wanting to do an A rank guide. So, here you go. <laughs> Trying to show you where all these specific, uh, you know, gems and crystals and whatever they are spawn at. For later. Okay, so Boo's going to spawn in here. We're going to grab him, and then we now have the water elements. That's two out of the three elements we got. Not too shabby. You get a lot of them really quick, though, too. Like, you basically get, I think, like two out of the three right in the second area, which is insane. And then the third one, I think, spawns later, which will be in the tea room. So we get ice later, and... Water is going to be very, very useful for, like, mostly, like, money stuff. And fire is mostly great for, like, offense kind of attacking. And ice is, unfortunately, rarely ever used. It's used for very specific puzzles and ghosts. And, of course, you know, so is fire as well, but that's okay. All right, there's a couple things you can do here. You can either catch the butlers... Or you can shine on them and make them disappear and still get the food. And that's what I was attempting at first, but that didn't seem to work out, I felt like. So I said, screw it. Uh, you might have noticed, I don't know if I, yeah, I'm doing this playthrough, I don't remember. Yeah, right there. I tried to burn him, that doesn't work. So I just said, screw it, I'm just going to suck him up. I'm tired of this crap. I just want these guys gone. So, you know, no big deal. I'm just pretty much just wasting time, so... Good chance for a breather, folks. Good chance for a breather. Okay, yeah, Mr. Lugs is going to be a relatively tough one to get. And tough as in, like, I feel like he's the tough, toughest one out of the main first two areas because of this table. That's what I feel like gets in the way is this table. Like, sometimes it'll, like, run right through it and it's like, oops. You know, Luigi will let go for some reason and it's like, oh, man, you suck. But it happens, and if it happens, well, oh well. You know, if you're going for gold, well, just restart your save and you should be fine. Okay, so after sucking up the food, he's going to start throwing out fireballs. And since this is the Hidden Mansion playthrough, that means he's going to throw out quite a few more. I think he throws out probably almost close to ten of these dang things. So that's the third one right there, and he's coming up for number four. I think usually he probably throws out like five or six in the main playthrough, but I think in this one he does like just a few more than that. He's, I think he's almost getting done. I think it's like nine or 10 right here. So it's hard to say. This might be like coming up on like 11 or 12 or so. Yeah, maybe. Oh, dang. He's really going over. Whoa. That's a whole five right there. Dang. Okay. So just do what you do normally to any other ghost, you know, doing the whole pullback trick. And you can definitely tell I got really lucky with that rodeo right there because like I said before, usually he'll fly over the table and just completely break my grab, and I hate that. But luckily, if you were just doing any percent or just didn't care enough, Mr. Lugs is technically optional, so you don't have to actually catch him. For those that are wondering, how do you tell if a ghost is completely optional or not? When they spawn a chest, and a chest has nothing but treasure inside of it, most likely they were probably not mandatory. Now, granted... That's not entirely true because sometimes they'll spawn a key 
to a room. And that key will be to a completely optional room. And that right there was just completely optional. So there's that. All right. Here we go. First use of, of water. I'm going to be basically just watering that plant. You only have to water it three different times. So every time you beat a specific area ghost, you come back and rewater it. And I'll show you all the times that I do it. So for those that are curious as to when and where and what you do with it, that's all you got to do. Okay. So I think this dog's name is Spooky. I don't remember. Well, anyway, the dog ghost, uh, he runs around like three times, and then Mr. Bones will appear. Mr. Bones, I hate this guy. I always do. You can use elements to kill him off, but what I do is I just wait until he gets either on the ground or close enough to my flashlight and just unleash havoc on him. And, of course, you know, with the dog, you do the same thing with the other ghost. Just do a whole pullback trick, and you should be fine. Grab him, and now... I'm going to go back, and I'm going to save the game. And the reason being that I'm going back to the mansion not worrying about going to fight Bogmire just yet is because once you go inside of there, you can't come back out until after you have finished off Bogmire. Granted, it's not a big deal. To me, it is, because I'm like, you know what? I got water now. I want to go back and water some plants. And you're probably thinking, like, well, Alex... If you beat Bogmire, you probably will keep your water, correct? Unless you just accidentally used it or something. That's not the case. As soon as you go fight in the area ghost, they typically get rid of your element. So you have to re-get it again once you get back into the mansion. So that always just kind of sucks. Also, when it comes to booze, they typically like to, you know, fly out the rooms and stuff. This is for people that don't know much about the game. They like to fly out of the rooms, and whenever they go into, like, dark areas, whether it be a room or hallway... They take even longer to capture because they're even harder. They're basically in their element at that point, so they're a lot harder to catch. And, of course, after every boo, you can save it, and I didn't save it because I was... I don't even know what I'm doing. I, you know, honestly, I have no idea. So I'm coming down here real quick, and the reason being is because there's actually a speedy spirit that you can catch before, I think, the blackout. I think he spawns... Only before the blackout, I believe. There's one that does that. So I come down here in area two just because. Get him out of the way. And he's gone. I don't think there's any mice that spawn in here, even though I think there really should be. Yeah, I absolutely think that there should technically be mice that should spawn in here. Because this has nothing but freaking mice in here. Yeah, mice ghosts are just... Oh, man, they're annoying sometimes, you know? They really can be. They can really ruin some of your... Some of your runs here. They can really take off some of your money. I mean, granted, when you get hit, all you lose is coins. But still, it's not good when you get hit either way. So I cut, cut that speedy spirit, cut that, you know, blue ghost. And I'm heading upstairs. And I'm going to head back into the closet area. Or the wardrobe room, I think it's called. And there's a toad on the balcony to the left. And there's plants outside. The only way to get money out of plants is to water the plants. So that's what I'm doing. So luckily, since we just got the water element, I decided to take the whole trek back here and grab the water. Of course, I'm going to use the mirror warp. I'm not stupid. So save you guys the trouble. And I'm also going to get this toad area unlocked. So that way, if I ever needed to come back here and save the game, then I totally can. Grab the sapphire, grab all the money, and we have six. I think I grabbed a total of ten in this entire playthrough. I'm not sure how many there are exactly. I think maybe like around 10 or so might be the max. Granted, you know, I could look it up, but you guys can also look it up yourselves if you were that interested in the game. I would love to be 100% accurate with everything I'm saying, but sometimes it's better just to not know, right? You know, just kind of had that childish fun with it. I'm here to get the A rank, and gosh darn it, I'm getting that A rank for you, so it's good enough. Granted, you know, like 150 million or whatever it is, playthrough would be interesting to do. Try to go for like that big gold, you know, like almost like a no damage run. That would be interesting. But Luigi's Mansion no damage run, it seems really tough. Unless you actually like reload the save. Because if you went from like beginning to end with no damage, you are probably a god. You're a godsend for no, for sure. Okay, so coming to this area, straight into that pipe, there's like a red gem, a ruby, what are you going to call it? They might be red gems, I don't know. They look like a gem cut, but it's hard to say. Or an emerald cut, I'm not really exactly sure. There's specifics when it comes to that stuff, so I'm just going to call it the ruby flavor. I'm curious, it looks like it. 
to me. It, you know, it's, it looks like it's got that color some more likely to me. It's probably just Ruby. I don't know. Go watch somebody make fun of Game Theory video about it because I know Game Theory did a video about Sonic's Chaos Emerald or not really Emerald or something like that and somebody basically schooled him by saying you know no you dumbass <laughs> they, they might have a non-emerald cut or something like that but they're still technically emerald I, I don't know I, I don't know well or they're, they have an emerald cut or something you know people that's what they do okay so next area boss two out of four yeah, I think so. Yeah, it should be. Okay, so this is Area 2's boss. This is Bogmire. He's... He used to be one of the toughest bosses for me to beat. But after beating him a few times, he's not really that hard. I actually get a gold portrait on him. Because the requirements, again, is to have at least... You know, take less than 10 health in the entire fight. And then you still get... You know, gold portrait. Okay, so immediately he's going to spawn this shadow ghost-like version of himself and he's gonna appear to the right you suck that up until it gets sucked up completely and then you try to shoot at Bogmire now I want to let you know of something real fast whenever Bogmire is spawning a shadow he typically just leaves it in place and it can't be grabbed until after he moves positions and once you get that initial first grab and you kind of lose hold of him which I lose like three different times I think I kept my, my third go Every time that you basically lose a grab, you know, you let go of Bogmire when you're fighting him, he will start spawning a whole group of these shadow enemies. And what I do is I like to suck them up and basically just tease them just enough with my sucking until they pretty much just explode. And then, you know, pretty much just uh, tease them a little bit like, hey, yeah, you want to come to my vacuum? I don't think so. So I'm just letting go as soon as they get turn into a puddle and it, it might be kind of vicious and kind of brutal to them I mean they did really nothing wrong it's Bogmire that's the one making them do this stuff so we, we don't really think about that here in hardcore Ed, but hey it's 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 up in the it's up there for debate but anyway that takes care of Bogmire he's really not that tough anymore like I remember like a long time ago he used to be really hard to beat but not much anymore also, these gravestones, uh, these tombstones do have, there's one that has a giant heart, and I think I got it earlier, so if you're looking for hearts, if you need help before you get into that Bogmire fight, which I definitely recommend, then I'd say grab it. I don't know why there's fire, though. Maybe you can bring fire into that fight. But, like I said before, that would totally contradict what I was saying before, which was, you know, you can't bring elements into a fight, so, who knows? Who knows why that's there? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I might just be stupid, I'm not really sure. But that does take care of Area 2. Area 2 is finally over. And I think Area 3 might be the second longest area we're going to be in. Because Area 4, not counting the blackout, is rather long on its own. Because Area 4 does contain Bowser's fight. Or King Boo's fight, pretty much, with Bowser. And also the blackout section. But I'm doing the blackout section by itself. So, no, hey, make separate them out make these videos a little bit shorter for you guys and shorter for me personally because these things go on for a while so there you go there's mostly i think all gold if not all gold i think they're all pretty much are actually we'll find out the name of the dog in just a second actually what is it it is spooky i think right i can't tell i think so anyway that was nine ghosts and here's my ranking that i have at that point so anyway guys i'll see you in area three and as always take care everybody